it depends the way we are, we are to fix the Greece problem, because otherwise it could be a disaster. Despite the fact that we are not the members of the European Union, but it's severely affected even Ukraine. Because look, Greece definitely needs austerity. And Ukrainian people already suffered too much. And my government passed three austerity packages. Uh, the same your government did a few years ago. So we can actually share an experience with our Greek friends how to pass reforms and how to make your economy more vibrant and more robust. So the better Greek problem will be fixed, the quicker this problem will be fixed, the better for the world. I mean, you wouldn't agree that more austerity will simply shrink the Greek economy worse and, uh, in the long run, worse than their situation. Well, there is no just a, another option. This is the only option, to pass painful, tough, but necessary reforms in order to make Greece strong economically and uh, in order to make European Union a viable project. But there has, at some point, got to be some debt relief as well, hasn't there? Well, the same goes in Ukraine. We started debt restructuring operation, and we believe that Ukraine and private creditors will be collaborative and cooperative in supporting Ukraine. Uh, well, it depends on the talks between the EU and Greece. We've seen uh, Prime Minister Tsipras go to uh, meet uh, President Putin a number of times. What do you believe is going on there? I believe this is not the right destination to go to. Do you think President Putin does see an opportunity to... Uh, find a chink, if you like, in the Western armor? Well, what Putin wants? Putin wants to have the daylight between, for example, Greece and another EU member states. So he wants to split the unity in the European Union. He wants to split the unity between the US and the EU. So he wants actually to escalate the situation and to trigger tensions inside the EU. So this is the aim of Russia, to create the hotspots in the entire world. The same style Soviets did 20 or 30 years ago. When they got troubles inside the Soviet Union, they usually redirected attention from domestic staff to the outside one. Mm. There are those who say that what this is really about is hurt pride and Russia wanting to re-establish its zone of influence, certainly in Ukraine. Russia wants to destabilize the situation and uh, you know that we have this notorious means deal. Mm -hmm which is actually a roadmap how to de-escalate the situation and how, how to get rid of Russian forces. And Ukraine on its side did everything to be whiter than white in implementing the Minsk deal. But uh, Russia is not doing anything on their side. No ceasefire, no Russian forces pulled back. So still, we believe that more than 40,000 troops 10 of which uh, belong definitely to Russian regular military forces are stationed in Ukraine. Uh, so Russia is to realize that this world is another than President Putin thinks about. So they have to behave like a responsible P5 member. They are not allowed to violate international law and they are to pay the price for illegal annexation of Crimea and for the invasion of Donetsk and Lugansk. Of course, Russia is still denying that it has troops uh, in Ukraine, even although one of our reporters, Katie Stallard, went to Russia, found the graves of soldiers who had been killed uh, in Ukraine. And yet the international community has kind of shied away from making an issue about this. Do you think that's the right approach? Well, the only country who denies the presence of Russian soldiers in Ukraine is Russia. And the only person who says, no, it's not we, is President Putin. But uh, I can strongly recommend to Russian regime just to switch on internet and to get the footage in YouTube of their troops, their tanks and their artillery. Uh, the world has a number of issues on the table and we do understand this. Iran, ISIL, Ukraine. Greece. Greece, <laughs> but this is in, on the same line, on the same level. And we are to act in concert and we are to stay united to find an appropriate and strong response to Russian-led aggression. This is in the interest of the entire free world, as Russia poses the threat, posed the threat not only to Ukraine. So what more would you like countries like Britain and Canada and the United States and France, where you've been visiting on this trip, what, what, what more would you like them to do? I just met President Obama, Vice President Biden, Prime Minister Harper and uh, Prime Minister David Cameron. And I want to be very clear and open. The Western world is doing everything to support Ukraine. Well, it's normal when we want to get more. But uh, we already got financial support, economic support, political support, and uh, even some kind of 
military support. We always ask for the defensive weapon, and uh, we strongly believe that uh, the Western powers will consider this idea strongly. So once again, we protect not only Ukrainian borders. We are defending the EU. But they have said, for example, that they're not going to supply you with lethal weapons, and it's very apparent that uh, the deployment of military force in support of Ukraine is not on the agenda. Well, uh, we do understand that there is no chance to reclaim the east of Ukraine with the military forces. But the thing is that we ask for the defensive weapon, but not just for offensive one. The defensive weapon to deter Russian-led troops. We are the only country who is fighting against the Russian army. So help us. So what would you characterize as a defensive weapon? Well, defensive weapon, anti-tanks, electronic warfare, navigation system, everything that makes Ukrainian military more durable and strong to contain and to deter Russian-led army. Isn't the truth, though, uh, tragic though it is for your country that the West has decided that Ukraine, if you like, is no man's land. There was a decision by NATO in 2008 to only go for associate status similarly with the European Union. We have to draw the lessons from the past. You know, when Ukraine and Georgia asked for a membership action plan in 2008 and were for NATO and we are refused, what happened next? Russia invaded Georgia and then Russia illegally annexed Crimea and then Russia invaded the east of Ukraine. And then Russia sent bad jets to your borders and started to intimidate alliance, NATO member states. So let, let's just realize that we have to change the policy towards Russia. Do you think it would be reversible in Russia after President Putin? Is it about a man and a style of leadership or is it actually about, in your view, the stance of a nation? I wish better future to the Russian people. Things will change. The well has changed already. What about the situation in the, in the part of Ukraine that you do control? You've had a standoff uh, over this weekend with a far right party and roadblocks put up and access to government troops not given there. So it's, it's by no means stable outside of eastern Ukraine, is it? Well, we lost 20 percent of Ukrainian economy and we lost 7 percent of Ukrainian territory but we are still in control of 93%. So we are confronting a number of challenges, both military, economic, financial. Uh, we will come through this. We already survived in, in the last 17 months. We are a very strong nation and strong country. And the democratic legitimacy of your own government? I mean, your own support has been going down quite dramatically. Well, that's normal, because my government started to very painful and tough reforms passing three austerity package and having high approval rating, <laughs> this can't match. But I do understand that the government is to bear the brunt for these painful reforms. We are working for the future. And finally, optimistic scenario, what, what would you like to happen over the next 12 months realistically uh, regarding Ukraine and standoff in eastern Ukraine as well? <sighs> After the revolution, we have not just the territory. We got the country and not just the people, but the really strong nation. We will make a success case story, but we need the support. Ukrainian people have sacrificed too much. This is, our, this is to be our joint quest, the quest of the free world to support Ukraine and to win, to win this battle. Yes, thank you very much indeed.